What is up, everybody? It is your boy Fry. Thank you once again for tuning in to another video, man. Shout out notification squad. I hope you're having a great day. Make sure to smash that like button as well as to subscribe if you're new to the channel. Smash that bell icon as well so I can keep uploading. So, yeah, man, today's video is going to be covering the fully parametric EQ to a bit more in depth. We're going to be looking at the layout of the plugin as well as how to get better sounding rap vocals. So, yeah, man, if your vocals sounding a bit crooked, a bit too muddy, then this video is definitely for you. Also, make sure to check the links in the description for my vocal recording course, vocal enhancer, as well as vocal mixing course. If you are mixing your vocals in FL Studio, definitely highly recommend it. So yeah, man, let's get straight in the computer. We're going to be looking at a track that I'm still working on, so it's kind of rough, so it'll be interesting to see how I approach, um, you know, the basics of EQ. So yeah, man, let's get it. Alrighty, now we're in the computer, so we are going to get going, man. So uh, pretty much I got this vocal right here. I am using my uh, cook-up template. Obviously, the cook-up template is a beat-making template and does not come with all of these vocal channels. I just decided today, hey, man, I'm going to make a beat from scratch and then um, rap over it because I want the highest fidelity. It gets kind of boring rapping over the uh, MP3s, <laughs> you know, a whole lot. So we'll take a listen to what we have and then we will slap an EQ on there and then I will first run through the foundation of what the EQ is and then we'll actually start EQing our vocal. Stick around. Yes, I'm high demand. Yes, high demand. Yeah, that's high demand. Yeah. I do not wear no designer. I don't want no Prada man. Huh. Still got all that swag. <laughs> yeah, he stole my swag. I don't even want it back. Slipping bands, I'm high demand. All right, so you get an idea of the vocal. Um, if we were just to mute the drums and stuff. Slipping bands, I'm high demand. That's high demand. Yeah, that's high demand. Yeah. I do not wear no designer. I, I don't want, want no Prada man. man. So as you can see, I already have an EQ on, which I'm going to leave on because I believe that uh, you should use one analog EQ with your with your digital EQ uh, just to get a good tone. But uh, yeah, we do a little bit of stuff there and that's not really important to this video. So we're going to step on our fully parametric EQ 2. Let's just find it. There it is. Okay, so there we go. We have our EQ. So basis of EQ, man. Um, I'll start kind of from left to right because that's how audio kind of works. And on the bottom of our frequency spectrum. So you need to understand this whole field here as... Um, our overall signal okay when we pass our voice through it flipping bands i'm high demand our voice passes through it and then the parametric eq is able to analyze um kind of where the voice fits within the uh sound spectrum okay of what we can hear so we can hear from 20 hertz all the way up to 20,000 hertz okay so if you if you look in the top left corner you will see down there we've got about 20 hertz right there and then up at the top we've got around uh, 20,000 hertz okay and that's all that we need to focus on when it comes to human hearing so you know, the way I look at vocals is we have our lower frequencies on the left hand side, okay? And those are most energy, um, I would say our energy, our most energy consuming frequencies, okay? Because if you have a vocal that's incredibly boomy, Lippin' bands, I'm high demand. That's high demand. Yeah, that's high demand. I do not wear no designer, I don't want no Prada. You can see how immediately overpowering the vocal becomes okay it becomes very painful or not painful to listen to it just becomes very tubby to listen to the drums have been taken over so the first thing i like to do when mixing a vocal is to focus on the low end okay make sure that you're just doing a nice clean cut eq so that would be around this region right here i would say a good range is from around 160 all the way down to zero hertz you want to really treat that if you feel that your vocal is too tubby sounding so those are kind of our low frequencies right there our mid band okay is where we're really going to be sitting man let me just get out this other eq because i can actually hover over it okay now this is just for example sake so um over here man we've got so from 160 onwards up to around 500 i would say is where we have our um let's just kind of hone that in right there so 160 160 up to 500 let's just uh, get rid of this so these two frequencies right here, all the way from here to here, is where we're gonna get our boxiness in our vocal, okay? So if I was to boost this. Bands, I'm high demand. Yeah, that's high demand. I do not wear no designer. I don't want no Prada man. Still got all that swag. So that's where our kind of tubbiness of the vocal is, not the excess bass, but more so just the the energy and the warmth of our vocal. You see, if I cut too much, and that's this is why EQing vocals is very difficult, is if you cut too much, the vocal immediately becomes too thin. Bands, I'm high demand. You know what I mean? That's a very common mistake, something I used to do as well, something I still do sometimes, is we EQ a bit too much in the vocal. So right around there is where we're going to find our tabbiness, our low mids, our muddiness, whatever you want to call it. From our mids onwards, we're going to be getting our intelligibility. Now, I don't EQ these regions too much. I did actually EQ them with the SSL 4K, but you only want to start EQing around this range once you have a firm kind of grasp. I would say from about a thousand all the way up to... 
I would say like 6,000. You really don't want to be EQing too much here. You only really want to be doing cuts in this region so you can make a nice thin queue, okay? And we'll run through this section as well just now. But you really want to be doing just a thin queue and then maybe notching out a max of 10 dB out of these regions right here because, you know, things might be a bit thin, you know, a bit too... um kind of shrill sounding and you can really do a cut here. You know what I mean? Like you can get rid of stuff like that. That sounds great. That sounds great, my bad. I was speaking uh, while the beat was playing. You know what I mean? So doing a little cut there is not going to hurt the vocal much, okay? So pretty much from 6k onwards, um, you're really going to be starting to find your kind of high mids and then your treble region, okay? And that's where you're going to get the air of your vocal. So generally, as you get better at recording, you're going to want to not be boosting too much unless you really know how to. So as you can see, this is the EQ I was actually using um, just for my rough mix. But as you can see, I've got a really crazy treble boost going on. And the reason I can get away with this treble boost is because I'm using an old microphone, okay? So this old microphone, starts to roll off around 16,000 hertz thus I can boost it because then it's going to bring out the air but if you're using a modern day microphone you know in the olden days when this microphone was made microphones didn't go all the way to 20,000 hertz okay or this one didn't specifically so nowadays all the new microphones you buy the Rhodes, the SEs, the um, M Audios whatever you're buying will be able to go up to 20,000 hertz so you want to watch out how much you're boosting in that region so you know if I was just to boost it a little bit so what you can do is you can do a shelf boost or a bell curve boost and we'll talk about that just now as well. You see what I mean? So you know when you've got a more high end microphone you can get away with doing a bit of a treble boost. Uh, Drake definitely makes use of that. Uh, Noah Fordy and his engineers definitely boost the heck out of Drake's vocals. That's why Drake always has that kind of sharp sounding vocal. Um, you, it's really dependent on the microphone you have. So yeah man, now that we've kind of covered where you would EQ for certain different sounds, okay, we can kind of look at the different styles of EQ we have. So on this top corner right here man, you can see that we have three different types of EQs, right? Um, or EQ style so over here let's see if we can actually open the manual up real quickly let's open up that good old help index right there um all right so there you go we're in the EQ section right now and these are the, the band types I want to talk to you about right here man so we have our low pass let me just see if I can detach this plugin real quick um this is a little trick right here for those oh you can't actually do anything with these plugins detached yeah you can't do anything about that mm. Nope, you can't. So, yeah, man, we've got our shelf style EQ, okay, which looks like that. It'll look like that, a shelf style EQ. And then we've got our bell style EQ, okay? And that kind of somehow looks like a bell. I didn't make these names up. They were just there. So as you can see, we have or a peaking is what it can be called, but let's just call it a bell style EQ because that's what most uh, EQ manufacturers will call it. And then we've got a high shelf, as I said. Um, and we've also got other options, but I generally wouldn't use the uh, low pass option for vocals so for example this you could do this if you really wanted to get a more analog sounding vocal so as you can see there's not much energy in my vocals there's no use of me really doing that but um yeah we've got our high pass option right here so this is the one that we're going to be using for rolling off the bass right there then we've got our, uh, well, this is actually a band pass filter right here. This is not really relevant towards your vocal mixing unless you're doing like a telephone effect. But for now, we'll just leave that right there, okay? So we've got really three different types. We've got our shelf, band pass, and we've got our peaking or bell style curve, all right? Now, generally for low shelf, I'm going to be doing that on an SSL style plugin. This is a low shelf right here. So if we were to emulate that, all it is is a minus 2.4 dip. Okay. So something like that. That is exactly what's going on right there. Okay. And that's great for just kind of toning the vocal. So what I would do is this is start doing what I would do right now is I generally would have a high pass filter. Okay. With a low shelving EQ and that's going to give me my initial vocal tone. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm just so used to listening to that. I'm going to keep that on. But yeah, man, you know what I mean? You could do that. But for most importantly, you want to be doing your high pass filter. So, okay, we already had that. And yeah, that's pretty much what we do right there, man. So let's get to actually mixing this vocal. So what I would use my analog 
vocal EQ because I, I believe that toning the vocal sounds much better with an SSL style plugin. I will do it soon, a, another video on this. But you know, I like to do my boost with an analog style plugin just because it sounds sweeter. It's not as critical as a fully uh, parametric EQ or a parametric EQ in general. I like to use them hand in hand. Okay, so as I said, I like to do my toning first and then I like to start doing my critical uh, mixing with the parametric EQ. So we'll start doing that. So I'm gonna listen to the vocal again and then we'll start working. Flipping bands, I'm high demand. High demand. Yeah, that's high demand. I do not wear no designer. I don't want no Prada man. Still got all that swag. So I can hear there's a little bit of like 200 something going on in the vocal. So we wanna really work on that. So I'm gonna enable the EQ. Or just kind of bring it up and then i'm going to make the q thinner okay this uh, adjusts how much we are affecting you know what i mean obviously if i'm doing this much it's a lot of eq and this much is more for a refined kind of uh eq notch we call this a notch filter so yeah man i'm gonna kind of skim the frequency range and find what i don't like bands, I'm high demand. High demand. Yeah, high demand. i do not wear no designer i don't want no Prada man still got all that so right there, you know, wherever I'm hearing that uh that kind of like resonant sound, I want to just dip away. Bands, I'm high demand. High demand. Yeah, that's high demand. I do not wear no designer. I don't want no Prada man. Still got all that swag. Yeah, he stole my swag. I don't even want it back. Slipping bands, I'm high demand. Yeah, that's high demand. I do not wear no designer. I don't want no Prada man. Still got all that swag. Yeah, he stole my swag. And then maybe a little bit around 500. Flipping bands, I'm high demand. High de yeah, that's high demand. I do not wear no designer. I don't want no Prada man. Still got all that swag. Yeah, he stole my swag. I don't even want it back. Flipping bands, I'm high demand. High de yeah, that's high demand. I do not wear no designer. I don't want no Prada man. Still got all that swag. And then maybe one in the middle right there. Bands, I'm high demand. High demand. Yeah, that's high demand. I do not wear no designer. I don't want no Prada man. Still got all that swag. Yeah, he stole my swag. I don't even want it back. Shipping bands, I'm high demand. High demand. Yeah, that's high demand. I do not. What I'm gonna do for this last one right here is I'm just gonna enable the the peaking mode or the bell mode, and then I'm gonna do that same boost that I was doing with the uh, waves EQ. Flipping bands, I'm high demand. High demand. Yeah, that's high demand. I do not wear no designer. I don't want no Prada man. Still got all that swag. Yeah, he stole my swag. I don't even want it back. Flipping bands, I'm high demand. High demand. Yeah, that's high demand. I do not wear no designer. I don't want no Prada man. Still got all that swag. Yeah, he stole my swag. I don't even want it back. Shipping bands, I'm high demand. High demand. Yeah, that's high demand. I do not wear no designer. I don't want no Prada man. Still got all that swag. Yeah, he stole my swag. I don't even want it back. Shipping bands, I'm high demand. High demand. Yeah, that's high demand. I do not wear no designer. I don't want no Prada man. Still got all that swag. Yeah, he stole my swag. Jeez, I hate how the EQ does that and then it just doesn't re resize itself. Flipping bands, I'm high demand. High demand. Yeah, that's high demand. I do not wear no designer. I don't want no Prada man. Still got all that swag. Yeah, he stole my swag. I don't even want it back. Flipping bands, I'm high demand. High demand. Yeah, that's high demand. I do not wear no designer. I don't want no Prada man. Still got all that swag. So what I could do as well is I I I prefer the waves one for this boost right here because it's just for some reason they all sound a bit different and that's kind of what's interesting. I like using this for cuts more and I like using this for boosts more. It is what it is. Flipping bands, I'm high demand. High demand. Yeah, that's high demand. I do not wear no designer. I don't want no Prada man. Still got all that swag. Actually, that's not too bad. Flipping bands, I'm high demand. High demand. Yeah, that's high demand. I do not wear no designer. I don't want no Prada man. Still got all that swag. <laughs> Yeah, he stole my swag. I don't even want it back. Shipping bands, I'm high demand. High demand. Yeah, that's high demand. I do not wear no designer. I don't want no Prada man. Still got all that swag. Yeah, he stole my swag. I don't even want it back. Shipping bands, I'm high demand. But anyway, there you go, man. I hope you learned something in this video, man. Definitely stay tuned for the full breakdown of this that I'm going to do. I'm going to mix the vocals in Pro Tools. I've just been making the beat in FL Studio because I know how to make beats in FL Studio. But yeah, man, hopefully you learned something about EQing rap vocals in FL Studio. I know it's not the most, like, basic, you know what I mean? Those guys that do, like, the whole 10 minutes on one little thing. This is the way I mix. You know, I keep it simple. So, yeah, man, check you out next time. Peace out.